story time is upon us for Saturday. Welcome to Saturday morning story time brought to you by 57 Chevy and Molly the shop dog whining over here and a uh, hi puppy. Good girl. And uh, superchargers and blown small blocks with a four speed and a 57 Chevy. Um, so this this story, I told you about the coop yesterday, the Bonneville trip or whatever, and trying to catch the back end on fire. So I moved it over here. Um, I lost a bet with my wife, actually, but the agreement was I could ship a car. So we shipped a car over, and I got it here, and it was like my second day here on the island. Actually, the car showed up about two weeks before I got here. And um, they were going to charge me $25 a day storage. And the car got here like weeks and weeks earlier than it was supposed to before we were planning. I may have told you that already. If I didn't, that's what happened. So I ended up flying over at the end of 2010 early. Hopped on a plane, flew over here. A couple bucks in my pocket. I told you that. I got a taxi, left my bags, got a taxi, went over, got the car, came back with the car, got my bags, had to go through security. They're mad at me because I left them unattended, blah, 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 blah. Lost and found, got them. Drove to the other side of the island, stayed in my parents' place. Got a job immediately um, at a hot rod shop. Actually, when I was going to get my car, I'm in the taxi. And I'm cruising along, and I look over, and I see this place called Hot Rod Alley. And there was a tattoo shop next to it, and I'm like, oh, Hot Rod Alley. And there was, you know, I was thinking, oh, maybe there's some old hot rods or something. Here. And there was like a, a 58 Chevy fleet side. And from like, oh, cool. I like old bikes. I like old cars. I'm going to check that place out. So I rolled by it, got my car, came by it again, because that was the only way I knew how to drive, the only road I'd been on. And uh, got to the airport, got my bags, and I went there, actually, before I went home. And um, no, I went home and dropped them off at that, my parents' place, and I drove clear back from the other side of the island over by where I surf. Drove clear back around to this side, went right to the shop, and met this dude, Hal. Pretty cool guy, Hal Davis. Pretty cool. It's got a real L79 um, Nova, 66 or 7, real one. But he's, you know, put a 383 in it and put a 9-inch in it and a, like a, I think it's a Jericho 4-speed. Pulled the original drivetrain out and stuck it under a bench so he didn't destroy it. And uh, he treats that thing. He's in his 70s, and he beats the snot out of it. It's really fun riding it. I mean, he, it's blue. It's real pretty marina blue. Always an original marina blue car. Looks totally stock. Rally wheels, original stuff, but is it's nasty. Like, nasty. Anyway, meet him. The owner of the shop's not there, but this guy is. And uh, he's like, hey, you have to check back later. So, uh, check back later the following day, actually. So it couldn't have been the second or third day I lived here that I got in the rainstorm. Might have been like a couple of days, actually, because I met the owner, and he hired me right on the spot. And so I started working on some cars and stuff, and he invited me over to his house for dinner. And he lived up the volcano where I live now, but he lived up a different road called Omeo Pio. And he was up about three-quarters of the way up there, above the Surfing Goat Dairy, which, yes, the they call it the Surfing Goat Dairy. It's a dairy where they make goat's milk and cheese and they got a bunch of old surfboards and the goats you know because goats get up on top of everything they're up on top of the surfboards and one will be eating the surfboard and the other one's on top it's serving goat dairy um anyway lives up by there and uh invites me up there so i go up have dinner with him and his wife and his kids and you know he's got some hot rods and some old bikes shows me around and gets to know me super cool guy at the time i thought he was super cool um turns out not so much, but at the time, and, uh, you know, I didn't know my, really know my way around, never been down the, up this road before, and it got dark, like, really dark, and there's no street lights anywhere at all, and a monsoon rain, like, what happened the other day happens only worse, like, one of the worst storms they've had here in a long, long time, um, like I said, the the poly that I go on to go to my surf spot, that was the highway I had to take. And there was big cliffs and stuff and all those, you know, the chain link fence holding all that stuff. That was like waterfalls. So I'll get to that in a second. 
So I go, hey man, I better get home. It's like 10 o'clock at night. It's pitch black, no street lights. And in this area, in this town, if you're not home around dark, you kind of feel like you're doing something wrong, like you're naughty, because there's really nobody out. There's nothing open really. There's a couple bars, but you know, there's really nothing open. I mean, it's a, it's mostly like a family community. So you know, when people get off work, they come home and they eat and they hang out and they just stay at home. And uh, you know, it's really, it's really cool like that. It's kind of old fashioned. And so me being new, fresh off the boat with my coupe, I come rolling down the hill and this has vacuum wipers. I told you about that. And it has the small block loom heads, vacuum wipers, not a big cam at the time, mild had an automatic and 241 gears at this point, but it's chopped. And um, the headlights are the old style headlights like this, non-halogen, just regular headlights. It is 12 volt, but it's not, you know, not super bright. And the road on this on this road, the it, everything grows here so fast. And this is like the rainy season, the winter. And so it grows like really fast, exponentially faster. And so the, Grasses are growing over the road, the shoulder of the road, and the, all the lines for the road, like the fog lines, are grown over. I can't see them. They haven't mowed, the, haven't mowed this road yet. And the pavement is ancient. So it's like breaking up and dark and you know, the paint's mostly gone. So the reflective quality of it's bad. So imagine being pitch black in an old coupe. The wipers are barely moving and I can barely see anyway before I got in the car, I could barely see, you know, across the street, it was raining so hard, way worse than it was here the other night. Just like, you know, just past the edge of my hood, I could barely see. And so I'm rolling along in this thing, going really slow, trying to keep my lights on the, the grass. And I'm going through the dark, I'm, I'm aiming for the dark area between these weeds that are, and grasses that are, you know, taller than my car. And, you know, I'm just kind of going through this road and I can't see anything. It's, I'm not reflecting off of the, I can't, the, it's not clear enough. It's raining so hard that my lights can't penetrate enough to see the road. I'm just hitting rain and grass. And so I'm going down this road really slow and pitch black. Wipers barely moving. I let off the gas and they kind of go, so I'm popping it in neutral. I'm revving it up and letting off and I'm trying to get them to clean. And they're the old single blade chrome ones from the, 40s that look you know they look cool but they don't do anything and uh you know i got a heater in this thing in ac and i've got the defroster going but you know it's starting to get moisture inside the car and it's you know it's not super super i didn't have the interior done and it wasn't really like you know there's lots of places for moisture to get in and i finally get down to the highway and i can see as i get down to the highway they actually had stopped like a a stop sign but there was actually like in town there was some street lights so i make it through town kahului town and i get up to the old highway and i head off that way and then there's no more street lights so it's pitch black and i'm on this highway but there are some tail lights in front of me for a little while and some headlights behind me so i'm just kind of trying to aim for the red blur as my wipers are going and it's black but this red blur and the rain's just like it's hitting everything it's so loud it's deafening off this thing and I make it through that way and some this person in front of me takes off on the other highway and heads to Kihei so now I'm heading around the mountain and I'm starting to hit that area where I go you know this is the poly and I go past the aquarium which had some street lights and that little marina had some lights I'm like okay I'm on the road I recognize this area it's dark and then it's black and uh I'm cruising along and I get about the thousand foot. There's a, there's a thousand foot lookout point out there. It says, this called says thousand foot lookout, but it's basically where people park and look out for whales out. And you can look at these other islands and blah, blah, blah. But I'm coming around there and I could see that I flash, you know, I, my lights are reflecting off of some of the signs. There's not a whole lot of street marker signs. They didn't have a bunch of them on the corners like they do now. Um, at the time, this is, you know, 10, 11 years ago. And as I'm rolling around there, um, my car is like, it's, it's really weird. It's kind of wishy and I don't, I, it's hydroplaning, but I, I'm not really realizing every once in a while I get like a bump off the side of it and like a, like a thud. And I was like, this is so weird. I don't know how fast I'm going. I got my, I don't have my GPS up. I don't have a speedometer in this thing. And I 
roll the windows down because it's starting to fog up and I roll the windows down and I can just hear like I'm standing in a waterfall and it's the rain but it's water coming off these rocks and every once in a while the car gets swayed off to the side and I'm like oh man I try and keep it back in and I, every once in a while I, I can make out uh, a fog line every once in a while or like a like a like a road strip or a light like a reflector goes by them so i'm aiming for this reflector and i'm going not going very fast and i eventually make it to this tunnel and I'm, i stop in the tunnel because i was like oh man okay i'm in this tunnel and you know i let the car kind of clear out and I mean, it sounds like a motorboat and i'm, I'm getting f thrown around on this highway like crazy and it's black and as i decide i'm going to keep cruising so i jet out of the tunnel and i I know that there's only like a couple more turns and then it comes down and then I'm on the highway and, and the, it kind of flares out. So I'm not in these big, I'm not on these cliffs anymore. And I wanted to be off that because I was getting moved around. Like I know I was, I was getting pushed off by these, all this water. And as I'm coming down off this last turn, it starts to let up on this side of the island. It's not nearly as torrential as I'm coming out of the tunnel. It's not nearly as bad. So I come out of the tunnel and I can kind of see the road in front of me and you know, my wipers aren't keeping up, but, you know, I'm not fogging up, but I can see it. It's not nearly as bad. It's kind of like it was the other night, more like that versus, you know, it's just the, the areas of the island get wetter than the other ones. So I'm coming around. I come down this last corner, and I can see there's traffic stopped, and there's a, an officer in a cop car, and he's an officer, and he's got batons, and he's in this, like, raincoat, and there's, like, a river behind him and he's stopping traffic and that's when i realized they'd stop traffic behind me and in front of me and they didn't know i was on the road and i've got blue dots and my taillights are really low to the ground on the back of this 46 and the car is like primer black and disappears like light disappears off this thing you know it's like or it disappears into it like you know like the stealth bomber kind of absorbs light and so i'm rolling through this thing and i go by this officer and he has no idea i'm there doesn't hear me coming and I I hit the water I knew what was going on I just just it just went up like that and I know I covered him completely in water and if he's watching this I apologize man that was me and I feel really bad but I never saw the officer and I know I covered most of the it's like in sea world where the animals jump in the water and like the first four or five rows get splashed and they tell you that well, that's what happened here like the first four or five rows of people got splashed i hit this officer and i don't know if it knocked him down i don't know anything i know i covered his car and all these other cars all this muddy red water river thing i just it was like a speedboat and i just motored on through and i made it to my parents place and it was over but uh that was the scariest ride of my life and that car, the next morning I got up and there's like all these little nicks and dings and stuff in the rockers where rocks had come off and volcanic rock had hit the side of the car and, you know, chipped off some primer and, you know, but that old car was made of steel when steel was thick, way thicker than this thing. That old 46 was like a tank. But uh, yeah, it like dinged it up pretty good, but it was, man, it was a wild ride. Wild ride. Uh, probably that's probably the worst rainstorm I think I've ever been in and they did close that was one of the only times I think they've only closed the poly twice since we've lived here maybe three times but that was the first one oh it was nuts nuts absolutely nuts anyway story time for oh wait is there any more stories I have about that car Um, nothing I want to share tonight, really. Not that I really think of. Oh, first time I got pulled over in it was about two or three, maybe two or three days later. And I'd been warned about this officer. His name was Taguma. And I'd been warned earlier by people on the internet, like, hey, when you move over here to Hawaii, Taguma is a name you need to know. Because that guy actually ticketed his own mom or something was the rumor and I thought they were joking and I you know so I was like oh literally this officer Taguma and I don't know if I told you this story or not but I was probably talking to my wife on my phone I was on my cell phone in Idaho at the time cell phone on the cell phone was not illegal 
over here it was. I didn't know that. So I'm motoring along, coming back from the other side, and I come across that stretch of highway where the other video, I'm at that light, and I say, hey, this is the first time I've been able to see, show you guys this part of the stretch while I was coming back that direction. And he used to have this little offshoot that he sat on like a speed trap where he would sit there in his police car before he got moved to a uh, three-wheeler or, you know, motor, like a meaner made kind of a thing for ticketing people up by the Capitol. But he was... Um, he was in this cop car and he, I didn't know him. I didn't know that that's who it was at the time. I had no idea. So I come blown by him on my phone, doing the speed limit, you know, or close. And he flips on his lights and pulls me over. And I'm on the phone. I'm like, oh, I get pulled over. And I'm still talking. And I go over. I have no idea why I'm getting pulled over. Pull over in the coop. Talking, talking, topping. He walks up and I'm like, yes? And he's like, he's like, looks at me with this look on his face like, what are you doing? And I was like, you know, can I help you? Like, you know, what's going on? Still on the phone. And he says, uh, do you know why I pulled you over? And I'm like, nope. I wasn't speeding or anything, was I? And he goes, no, you're on your phone. And I'm like, and? He's like, well, it's illegal to be on your phone. And I was like, it is? Since when? And he's like, since like for a while. Where are you from? And I hand him my license and he's like, Idaho. It's not illegal in Idaho? And I'm like, no. He goes, well, it is here. And I'm like, oh, oh, honey, I got to go. Sorry. And I hung up my phone. I'm like, okay, sorry. And he just looked at me with this look on his face like he couldn't believe, like smoke was coming out of his ears. He couldn't believe that someone, like he knew everybody knew who he was. And he knew that everybody, like, was terrified of him. And that he, the thing was about this officer is he was by the book. He wasn't some jerk. He wasn't somebody that just pulled people over because he was he was a real jerk. He wasn't that. He was a by the book, legitimate. It didn't matter who somebody was. He didn't respect anybody differently than anybody else. He just his mom, his sister, his cousin, his best buddy, his classmate didn't matter. If you were speeding, if you broke the law in any way, he was like he was upholding the law. That was his job. So here he is doing his job and. Uh, I'm not trying to be like maliciously, you know, disrespectful. I really didn't have any idea. But he just looked at me like, like, uh, and I'm like, what, what do you get? I mean, what do you mean? I didn't, I was like, I didn't know what he was going to do next. And he didn't know what he was going to do next. So he just said, well, now, you know, so don't do it again. I'm like, I won't. And he left and I got in my car and, and I just put in gear and off I went. And he got, and I, and I found out later that was Taguma. Yeah, it was Taguma. And I was like, oh my gosh. I, I got a story for you guys. I got pulled over by Taguma. And like, no, yeah, everybody gets pulled over by Taguma. I'm like, no, I was on my phone. And they're like, oh, do you get you good? I'm like, no, he let me go. Taguma let you go? Taguma's let anybody go. I'm like, I let me go. And, you know, I never had trouble with the guy. But, uh, man, there was a lot of people that, that didn't like that guy. Because, you know, he caught him doing wrong. He legitimately did, and I was totally in the wrong. Had no idea, but uh, yeah, that's the other story. But that was good to tell you about that. But uh, I'll think of some more, and I'm sure somebody else will ask me some questions about like, you know, some other stuff, and it'll remind me, or I'll do something dumb and it'll remind me of something else. But anyway, thanks for hanging out, guys. I really, really do appreciate it. Once again, um, yeah. I really do. I can't wait to get my parts so I can show you some more stuff. Um, yeah, I know I'm going to film on Sunday. After I do the time belt, what am I going to film for you guys? Give me some suggestions. Maybe I'll get lucky and find a welder. Or maybe I'll borrow Rob's and start chopping on this desk. Dash, that could happen. Or maybe he'll want to do the rear end after. Maybe we'll do the time belt so fast, we'll take a break. Uh, both belts and we'll end up doing some rear suspension stuff. You never know. Uh, stay tuned to your friendly bat channel or whatever. Anyway, you want to say goodnight, Molly? Oh, no, she doesn't. Okay, see you guys later.